Hello everyone and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we are going to discuss a very important data structure that is Q. And we are basically going to cover the introduction part of the Q and its array implementation. So what is Q? So like stack, Q is also a linear data structure which follows a particular order in which operations are performed. In the case of stack, that particular order is first in last out. In case of Q, the order will be first in first out. That is FIFO. A good example uh, to understand the, the, the concept behind Q can be any Q of customers for a resource where the customers that customer that came first is served first. So when you go to say McDonald's and you need to have a burger, so whoever came first is served first. So you keep maintaining a queue and uh, if you have five people which came before you, then after those five people are served, only then you are served. So in this way, uh, this is actually the way a queue works. So it is very uh, close to the uh, real life queue. Uh, the difference between stack and queues is in removing. So thinking about the implementation part. So in both stacks and queues, uh, we, we, the, the, uh, the push operation is basically the uh, same, but the difference comes uh, in removing uh, the elements. So in stack, you, uh, you actually remove the first element which came. Uh, whereas, uh, I mean, uh, in stacks, you, re, uh, you actually remove the last element uh, which has just come. And in queues, you uh, actually uh, remove the uh, first element which came. So it is actually the opposite. Now, in a stack, we remove the item that is most recently added. And in a queue, we remove the item that is least recently added. Yeah. So uh, what are the operations on the queue? So mainly the following four operations are performed on the queue, which are in queue, DQ, front and rear. So uh, let's see these operations one by one. So NQ, as you might have guessed, is basically adding an item to the queue. Uh, what it does is it actually checks if the queue is full or not. And if the queue is full, then it is said to be an overflow condition that you cannot add more elements to it. It's already full. Otherwise, you just add the element. Now coming to the DQ. So again, uh, as we did in NQ, uh, we remove the uh, item from the queue. But before that, we actually uh, check if the queue is empty or not. If the queue is empty, it is said to be an underflow condition. And thus we cannot remove any elements because it is empty, it doesn't have any element. So we can't remove any more elements out of it. If it is not empty, then what we do is we remove the item from the queue. Now uh, let's get to the uh, front and rear operation. So the front is actually a kind of a peak operation in case of stacks. So it just gets you the uh, front item from the queue and rear what it does, it just gets you the last item from the queue. So before going on to the implementation part of the queue, let us first discuss what are the applications of the queue. Uh, in the real life and in the uh, computer science world. So Q is used when you when things don't have to be processed immediately, but have to be processed in first in first out order. So just like uh, the breadth first search, wherein the element which was inserted first is actually traversed first. So uh, any scenario where the uh, element which came in first has to be processed first. Uh, in that case, we use a queue. Uh, so this property basically makes it uh, makes it relevant for a lot of scenarios. Uh, so in any scenario where a resource is shared among multiple consumers, so in that case, uh, whoever came first is act that resource will be uh, used by that uh, customer first. So it it includes. Uh, CPU scheduling and disk scheduling algorithms. So both CPU scheduling and disk scheduling algorithms actually uh, use uh, the queue data structure very, uh, very much. 
uh, also when uh, data is transferred asynchronously uh, so data may not be necessarily received at the same rate as sent uh, but when it is uh, to be sent asynchronously between two processes so for example you have the io buffers pipes file io etc so uh, let's come to the implementation so in this video we are going to discuss the air implementation of the queue for implementing the queue we need to keep track of two indices that is front and rear that is because at one end you insert the elements and at the other end you remove the elements whereas in case of stacks you actually had just one end where you used to insert the elements and you used to remove the elements now we enqueue an element at the rear and we DQ an item from the front. So if we simply increment the front and rear indices, then there may be a problem. Front may reach end of the array. So because we are using the array implementation here, so the, the, the intuitive approach would be to simply increment the front and rear indices. But that would actually not work uh, because uh, uh, after after a few operations, there may be a case that front may reach the end of the array, and thereby uh, therefore it cannot be increased. Whereas there there might be some space uh, in the array, but because your front has reached the end of the array, you would not be able to uh, insert more elements. So that is our, what we do is we actually uh, increase the value of front and rear in a circular manner. That is that if the if uh, say the element the array has a size of five elements and uh, uh, you, you are uh, your uh, rear is uh, your front is actually at the fifth uh, element that is the index four so if you try to insert an element what it will do is it will insert the element at the zero index so it will go in a circular fashion so uh, let's get to the uh, c implementation of the uh, queue so here you have the standard header files which are needed then you see a structure queue which has these three uh, elements first of all the front rear and size so front and rear will keep the value of the front and rear index and the size will actually keep the uh, count of number of elements which are right now in in the queue then you have a capacity uh, which will actually hold the actual capacity of the queue so it can be say five elements so if the, if, if an array has five elements and uh, it's, it has the capacity of five elements and the current occupancy is of two elements then in that case the capacity is equal to five and the size is equal to two because only two elements are there in the queue then you have the uh, integer array which is the actual queue where the elements will be stored now uh, let's look at the uh, function create queue which returns the pointer to the queue so it just takes as an argument the capacity and what we do is uh, we create a pointer structure queue star queue and you actually allocate the memory to it uh, which is equal to the structure queue then we fill in uh, its properties here so whatever capacity was uh, given as an argument we assign that to the capacity variable then the front and the size is initialized as zero because the front index will start at zero and the size is also zero because right now it doesn't have any element then the rear is actually initialized with capacity minus one that is it will uh, be actually uh, pointing to the basically the last uh, index of the queue and once you do a NQ operation, then it will actually uh, start pointing to the first element in the queue, which is at the index zero. Uh, then you have the uh, array. Uh, so we actually, what we do here is we actually allocate the memory. So we allocate the memory, which is equal to the uh, capacity times the size of integer because we have the integer array. Uh, if you if you if you need to have a queue of say another structure then you can have the structure name here and you can have the size of that structure so in that way you can actually uh, go ahead and uh, create a queue of another structure uh, once you have done these steps then you just return the queue which is actually a pointer to the queue 
uh, now let's see uh, first of all the two uh, functions which will be which we will be using in nq and dq so first of all the function is the is full uh, what it does it just checks if the queue is full and the queue will be full when size becomes equal to the capacity so it just checks that if size is equal to the capacity good so uh, then you we have the function is empty uh, which checks if the uh, queue is empty or not so what it needs to do is it just needs to compare the value value size with zero if it is equal to zero then the queue is empty otherwise it's not okay coming to the uh, main uh, one of the major operations which is the nq so the nq function takes as an argument the pointer to the queue in which the element is to be added and that item itself which is to be added so it has two arguments so as discussed uh, first of all we check if the queue is already full or not if the queue is full we return we cannot uh, we cannot add that element inside the queue it's already full if that is not the case then we assign the uh, these three variables uh, rear array and size so we update the uh, rear uh, with the value uh, rear plus one uh, percentage uh, in the capacity of the queue so this is done to actually increment the value of the queue in a circular fashion so as soon as it reaches the capa the size capacity then it will actually reset to the value zero and then we'll keep on incrementing it uh, so once the uh, rear has been updated then we assign the value in the array at that uh, specific index so at index rear we actually assign the item in the array and then we also update the size that size has incremented so size is equal to size plus one finally after uh, doing this uh, nq operation uh, we print that uh, nq to the queue and we also print the item that was uh, enqueued now uh, coming to the dq function so dq function uh, just takes as an argument the actual queue and it will return an integer uh, which will be the uh, dequeued uh, value so as discussed in the algorithm uh, we are first checking that if the uh, queue is empty or not if it is empty then we cannot do anything we just return the int min otherwise if the queue is not empty then we can uh, remove uh, one of the element so what we do what we'll do is we'll remove the element at the uh, front of the uh, queue so the int item here is the uh, element at index front of the array then we update the front and the size so front is actually incremented again in a circular fashion so this is done to uh, to to overcome the limitation wherein uh, the front reaches actually the end of the array and then we think that we there's no more elements in the queue and will not be able to perform the dq operation uh, but when we do this then we are actually moving in a circular fashion so uh, it will work for us then the size is actually updated to uh, size minus one because we have removed one element so the size becomes size minus one and in the end we re, uh, return the element which was actually removed from the queue uh, now uh, now there's another function front which uh, gets you the element at the front of the queue so again it it will first of all check that if the queue is empty if the queue is empty then it returns the int min otherwise it returns the element at the front of the queue similarly we have the function rear so again it checks if the queue is uh, empty if the queue is empty then it can it cannot uh, do anything so it returns int min otherwise it just uh, returns you the element at the index rear which is basically the element which is at the rear of the queue okay so uh, we come here to the uh, driver function so this is how everything uh, everything uh, combines so we created a pointer queue and we call the function create queue with the capacity as thousand so the queue will have the capacity of thousand here 
and then we do uh, NQ operation four times and we uh, we add the value 10 20 30 and 40 so when we do that uh, we see that the 10 NQ to the Q 20 NQ to the Q so on till here now what we do is we perform a DQ operation so when we perform a DQ operation because 10 was inserted 10 was the element which was inserted first so 10 will be the element which will be dequeued from the queue at this point of time then we just uh, call the function front to check what which is the element at the front right now so the element at front is now 20 because 10 is already removed then we check the element which is at the rear so the element at the rear is 40 because that was the element which was inserted last in the queue okay so coming to the uh, time complexity so the time complexity of all operations like nq dq is full is empty front rear is order of one because we basically do not have any involvement of a loop in all of these operations so thank you for watching this is all in this tutorial thank you very much